Lab 30 is asking when we do a cross-site request forgery vulnerability, where does the cross-site script itself have to run from? Does it have to be in the site that's vulnerable to the request forgery? Can it be any site that the user has access to or can reach over the internet? It may help to look at a visual of how cross-site request forgery works to answer this. When we think of a phishing scenario with cross-site request forgery, we have some sort of a phishing link sent that the user unfortunately clicks on and that causes their computer to now browse over to some malicious website. When they reach that site, the cross-site script on that site is going to ask their browser to browse in the background over to the vulnerable web application. And when we say vulnerable web app, we're talking about the application vulnerable to cross-site request forgery. This will include the cookie, because browsers always send cookies to the domain on each request automatically. The cookie will reach the application, the application processes the transaction, and then tries to return the response. Now let's assume that the cross-site script was not on the same domain, not on the same site as the site that was vulnerable to request forgery. The response is going to be sent back to the browser, but because the request came from a different domain, the browser will actually block the response from the CSRF attack, even though the transaction was processed. This is one of those situations where the behavior of the browser actually makes the, the whole entire situation worse because any response that may have alerted the user to some kind of a problem is automatically blocked by same origin policy. So it's rather ironic how that works, but that's just the nature of the same origin policy. It doesn't block requests, it only blocks responses. If we have a watering hole where the user browses over to a malicious website, maybe a, a forum that has a cross-site script embedded in it, or in several popular sites over the years have been victim to cross-site script attacks. The user shows up at one of these places, unfortunately trips across the malicious script. Well, that's going to cause their browser to go out to the malicious site. So we think of some kind of a benign but vulnerable web application. The hacker injects the cross-site script. These would typically be a persistent cross-site script that's going to stick around because it's being stored in a database, sometimes also called stored cross-site scripts. Now this web application has this malicious script sitting on it. The user comes along, they visit the infected website, the script executes in that domain, and tells the user's browser to go visit the site vulnerable to the request forgery. So that request goes out and includes the cookie because cookies are always sent with each request regardless. The transaction is processed and the response goes back to the web server which forwards it on back to the user's browser. But again, the browser will block that response because that request was initiated from a different domain. There's not going to be any cross-origin resource sharing headers in this case, unless it's just a coincidence, and so the response is going to be blocked. So it doesn't actually matter what domain has the cross-site scripting vulnerability. In fact, in some sense, it's better if the cross-site scripting vulnerability is executed from a domain that isn't the site that's vulnerable to the request forgery because that will ensure that any responses coming back from the forgery are going to get dropped by the browser due to same origin policy. And this is one of those situations where the, the HTTP protocol itself is really just ill-equipped to handle these types of situations and the same origin policy also lacks basic protections needed. And that's why you start to see 
same site cookies and other band-aids coming out nowadays to to help curtail this a little bit more we look at the different answers here and we basically say it's going to be any site on the internet it really doesn't matter actually it can be any site the user can reach so really could even be an internet site or it could be a site on the intranet if the user happens to be on that network so it doesn't matter where the site is and we hit submit and find that that's the correct answer.